Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. The sun is out over the pond in Blighty. It won't be long, I'm sure we'll get back to the, the standard weather, all normality will be resumed. Today, I've got an interesting one for you. I thought I'd do an instructional one, uh, a how I play kind of song. And the reason why I thought I'm going to do another John Lord one is I had a lovely chat to a lovely person who shall remain nameless, who um, was really inspired by a couple of bits and some interviews that I did. And uh, I was quite humbled by it, actually. And it made me start thinking of, starting to think of John again, which I often do, uh, very affectionately. And then I thought, well, why not this weekend do another How Do I Play? So today I'm going to have a look at how I play Hush by Deep Purple. Okay, so um, first of all, Mighty C3, of course. Um, there's some tricky bits in this song, so we'll see how that goes. I might invoke a little bit of a drum background as well to, for, to get the, the point across. We'll see, we'll see how that goes. A couple of things to mention organ-wise. Uh, for you fans of overdriven Hammond, you, you're in luck because this is a Hammond whacked up on 10. Draw bar registration wise, usually that one's a little bit back um, and these are kind of up, you know, it's not like your, not like your highway star balls out thing, but there is a bit of a thing with these two top draw bars that kind of tweet it up a little bit, so I tend to have that down a bit. And the bottom register three out really and a little bit of overspill, I kind of like the overspill a little bit. We have to talk about vibrato swell as well and the, and the chorus here because I think there's a bit of C1 going on when John plays, certainly in the solos to the end and I'll do a little bit, if you hang about to the end, I'll do some little tips on that one as well. Um, the, this particular Hammond I use, is the C3 setting, C3 setting, sounds more like the C1 setting that he used, strangely, but uh, you know, it's not getting, that's, not, that's a whole depth of stuff that we can't get into right now. So. What I thought I'd do is I thought I'd chunk it up a little bit, show you the parts, and um, we'll go through it together. I've played this in a lot of bands, actually, and every band I'm in play it differently. I was researching Deep Purple playing it, and I play it different every time, so that's going to be interesting. And then other bands that I've played in, we've, I've, I've played Hush, and I'm going, what's going on with this? There's something not quite going on with this. And then I realise it's the Cooler Shaker version which is pretty good. And the organ player for Cooler Shaker, and apologies sir, I can't remember your name, is a big fan of John Lord and tries to play it as, as good as he can and as close to the original as possible and I really appreciate it. It's a nice, check out their video, it's quite cool. I'll, I'll put a link later on, just below the uh, like and subscribe button, which would be really helpful for me. All right, so let's, uh, let's have a go, all making noise, good, let's get on it. Okay, so from, intro from memory the intro uh, there's about three or four chords here there are four chords and uh, they're coming right at you now B flat major A flat major F and then G okay so might be he might be playing the left hand up here a little bit I can't hear what you can hear all the lovely distortion stuff I can just hear the sort of echo coming from my uh, Leslie room over there okay the easy bit is over now that's it that's that's the easy bit so get that bit right because now we're going to go into some kind of um, the thing that I, one of the things I really like about John Lord is that he's a rhythm guitar player on organ. That's what we're really looking at here. He's a rhythm guitar player and he's got some chops. He's got some serious chops, right? I have not got those serious chops, but I will have a go for you. So if we, if by the magic of uh, jump cuts, you see, if you see some jump cuts, then um, I probably messed it up, but don't tell anyone, right? So. Or something. No jump cut, no jump cut. Although I could have played it better. Uh, I 
I know, right? So, we're going to have to have a bit of a go here, aren't we? So, I'll slow what I'm doing down. If you think it sounds anything like it, superb. Uh, if you think it could be improved somewhere, please let me know in the comments, right, or over on my Patreon, Nick Foley UK, and tell me where I'm doing it wrong. But this is how I do it, you know. So take it, uh, take it over, or, or, or leave it where it is. But I'm going. Messed up a little bit there, didn't I? But. So you dum ba 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 and all that business. But usually when I do it, I have the Leslie on. Because it makes it sound better and easier. But, and John did a lot, but in this one, he does not have the Leslie on. Right, so I have to work on that one. Getting the lefty righty is, is not easy. I had to have another listen today because I've uh, not been playing it right lately. I've been playing it easily. Um, but right is the right way to do it. So that's pretty close, I think. Then that kind of pattern, which is quite hard to hear on the record, sort of flows through into the song. And uh, you can hear him just going. There's some ups as well. Maybe I'll put some drums on the back of that uh, to see what you think. And hold on, hold the lion call out. Talk amongst yourselves, there'll be a little drum cut and then these drums will come on and that might help a little bit with the, with the timing, sister. Was that helpful with a bit of drums on there? So you see a bit more groove going on and some guy just smacking the keyboards like this is not a, is not a great help unless you, until you hear where the, where the one is and where the groove is. So work on that one. Maybe I'll go into a bit more detail. I might just do another little video just on that bit and I'll get all the backing on and I'll get uh, sued by Orchard Entertainment and Edwards and Coletta and all the other people. So it'll be a completely demonetized video, but you'll get to hear it in situ. And I think that'll be really good for you to, to work on. So we'll do that in a bit. Let's move on from that scary bit. <clears throat> you can relax a little bit now and we're going into chords. So G flat major. E flat major, B flat major, F major. Ah, and rest. Now I think uh, when that note comes in between the two motifs, you can hear a bit more grooving, but the note's hanging on. Now I don't know how he's doing that with two hands. All right, uh, because there's definitely a left and a right going on here, and there's definitely a, a high note up there. So it could be it could be an overdub or something. Because later on, when he does the solo, and remember, I'm going to help you a bit, a little bit later on with the solo. When he does the solo later on, you can the 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 rhythm of the organ, the rhythm section and the drum beat, they're building up and building up and building up to that crescendo at the end. If you've heard the song, 
have a little play. Get on the old Spotify or the old YouTube, I suppose we should be saying, shouldn't we? And uh, have a listen to an official version of that and you'll see the bits I'm talking about. So... <laughs> is the kind of thing. And later on, when we go into that... There's a held note. And I'm doing there is kind of like a C minor 7 to an F. And that leads me nicely into the verse, because the verse is kind of um, a bit of that... Um, I play it down here on a different registration, so I'm going to be doing a bit of the chopping. <laughs> Kind of thing, and the, and the chords I'm doing there, minus seven to F, and different inversions thereof. I've heard I've heard him play it differently so many times. Um, I wanted to be able to give you a, a definitive version, but actually he's different every time, and he just I think just plays whatever, whatever he plays. I mean they they kind of well I was going to say they wrote it, but they didn't, did they? Who was it who wrote it? You know, don't you? Let me know. Let me know down there. I know. You know. So. She's got love it like a quicksand, quicksand. See what I mean? So there's that still going... Going on in the background whilst that high note... He's got a love and like a quick <laughs> So if you're live, right, you switch the Leslie on and get your hand in the air, right? Why, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Because if you play side onto the stage, which I do, so it's the, sort of the audience are kind of to my right here. You can really get with the flapping, can't you? And you get, uh, when I do festivals, my job is to try and get the, the photographers from the centre, because they're all after the singer, because the singer's the shot, and the guitar player's the shot. And whenever I do any songs that involve a bit of this, you know... They all shuffle across and, uh, and get some photos of that. So that's pretty cool. So try, pull them across, get them across. Where do we get to? So. We've got the intro, we've got the complicated bit, we're getting a groove and setting up a groove and you're just going to have to practice and practice and practice that. It's hard for me to show you without having a bass player and a drummer there, to be honest, but I think you, you know what I'm getting at. Then we've got the riff. And uh, that's also the chorus, isn't it? You've got a bit of the verse. And then there's a, there's a little breakdown bit. The only other bit really we need to worry ourselves too much about before we go on to the solo is the breakdown bit, which is... Okay, so it's hush, hush, I thought I heard a call in my name, so it's hush. Early in the morning, right? You know, I think so. Knock yourself out with that. But basically, what's happening? It's hard to hear on the record because they've got the way they've overdone the hush, hush, and what have you. But it seems to me like he's doing a bit of the groove and then picking up that F major, B flat major, right? So it's, so it's it's kind of it's it, the bass player is probably doing the C, no, C as you're going. Slightly different rhythm I'm doing here. I'm doing. Yeah. Here 
we need to get it up into the groove. It... For me, it doesn't matter what I do really there, all you're getting is the clicking. You get the clicking in the right place, and if it's in the wrong place, just don't do it at all, just hold that. Sorry. Just do the chords really if you want, even, even fifths on that C perhaps. Okay, good, good, good. Checking it was all going now, but it is fine. Uh, so that's the, that's the breakdown bit. And then you got the early in the morning, late in the evening. So you put all these bits together, and what have you got? Well, you've got, um, you've got an intro, you've got a difficult bit, you've got a groove which comes and goes, you've got a groove into a verse which is only punctuated by the And then you string all those bits together in the order in which they are played and you will get the song Hush, I think. I want to show you, I want to tell you something about the, the solo and it's, it's, a, it's a tricky one. It's, it's obviously John would have ad-libbed this. He usually, by the time he got into his groove in the, from the 80s onwards, he'd have three goes at it. If he didn't get it three times, he would give up for the day on that particular solo and then pick it up the day after because he's really into the fluidity, fluidity of it all. So the only thing really I'd say is have a mess around. If you have a Hammond clone, have a mess around with the chorus on C1. See how it changes your sound. Does it make this bit sound better? Might do, might do. But it certainly makes the solo bits right. That's that's in there. That's the lick in there. That that does help. So watch out for that. And he goes up to the, the, the it's a C and a G trill. One five. And then he majors it. Majors it a lot. And also holding on that minor third, I noticed. No, I'm not playing the actual solo, but I'm trying to get into the trying to get into the groove of it, if I can. So uh, be sparing, but be useful with that major. That's nice. I think Cooler Shaker nicked that as well. That's quite good. And then running down this pentatonic blues or the minor blues is there. You can also trill off the B flat if you want to. You can trill off the E flat. And just hold on that for a little bit as you're coming and going. And then go and have a listen to that solo because you'll start to hear the rhythm and how amazing he is with the rhythm. And I've seen him do some strange things when he's going really fast. I've seen him hold his wrist here and give it that. And I don't, I don't know if it's something particular to his physiology, but he put his hand over there and give it that. The, and he'd be really, really fast and really accurate. I'm not built that way. I don't know. I don't know what he's up to there. I really don't. But it's, it's impressive. Might be doing it for the cameras. Who knows? I certainly don't. But have a have a mess about with uh, get the the chorus on.
etc etc so we've got some bits together have a go let me know what you think let me know if you think i've helped you there might be some bits that uh, other people do differently and that's absolutely fine i'm me you're you and john was most definitely john uh, i wouldn't pretend to be able to play as well as that guy i really wouldn't um i'd probably give up if i could play as well as him but that's how confident i am that i'm not playing as well as john Lord. but i have a go right we all have a go we all have our place it's not a competition let's all be friendly so that's my version of Hush. What I'd like you to do now is to go and have a listen to the original with that in mind and try and play along, see what you think, let me know. If you enjoy this, please let me know. If you didn't enjoy this, please let me know. It's all good research, right? And hopefully I've helped you a little bit. So with, there's nothing much more to say than have a lovely week, enjoy yourself and uh, make good decisions. Thank you. Oh, it was a hard one.